Is this an electric vehicle charging point? Well, actually, no it's not. Like a theme in a song, clever Feeling high, feeling low at the same time So today we're installing another Zappy charger. This is an outside job completely and it is wet. So I've built myself a little shelter to keep myself nice and dry. <clears throat> so what we're doing today is we're gonna do the outside consumer unit on the wall here, the Zappy charger right next to it, nice and simple. We're gonna be talking about a new outside consumer unit that I've purchased to try out today and I'll give you a little review on that. And I'm also gonna be explaining to you about why an electric vehicle charging point isn't actually a charging point. It's supply equipment. The obvious signs that a meter box hasn't been opened in a long, long time. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna clean out this meter box and then I'm gonna prep my materials, get all my tools out and then crack on and get this job done. So the consumer unit I'm installing today is this IP65 rated 8-way consumer unit by Whitecliffe Electrical. I've gone for a slightly bigger board today because I like the idea of allowing for expansion in the future. If they get a second electric vehicle charging point, the capacity is already there. So they don't have to get the IP rated consumer unit replaced again. So inside this consumer unit, it's got a good strong front cover on it. And then inside we have a 100 amp main switch, surge protection and MCB. And then I'm going to stick some blank modules in there. Some of these IP rated consumer units don't come with neutral and earth bars fixed. Watch out for that. And the only thing with this is that the SPD doesn't have an earth link with it. It's got the live link between the surge and the MCB, but not an earth link for the SPD to the earth bar. Maybe they just missed out on this one, I don't know, but just watch out for that. So if this isn't an electric vehicle charging point, then what is it and why do we need it? 
The first thing I want to clear up is these are often referred to as EVCPs, which stands for Electric Vehicle Charging Points, when actually they should be referred to as EVSEs, which is Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. Now every electric vehicle has an onboard charger. So if the car has an onboard charger, then why do we need one of these? Well basically, this is here to mediate between your house electrics, the grid, and your vehicle. When charging an electric car with alternating current, the onboard charger comes into play. And what this does is it makes the conversion between AC current and DC current, which then goes to the car battery. The main function of this AC charger is to communicate with the vehicle onboard system. And this tells the charger the maximum current that it can draw at any one time. So the charging station regulates the charging according to the current possibilities of the house or the charging point. So the network is not overloaded. So if this is the case, why don't we have DC chargers installed at our homes? Basically, these AC supply equipment chargers, or whatever you want to call it, are seven to 10 times cheaper than a DC charger. So how does charging actually work? There are two types of charging. There's AC and DC. If AC power is used, the AC travels through the charging cable into the onboard charger, which then does the conversion from AC to DC. The other reason we install these AC chargers at homes is to ensure your safety and the safety of your electrical installation. Now this is a very brief summary of how this works and what it does. If you'd like a more in-depth video, leave a comment below and I'll make sure that I'll put a video together explaining all about AC chargers, DC chargers, EV supply equipment and all the other bits and bobs. Also, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Tip of the day, if you have to build yourself a shelter or a canopy, don't put your charger at the corner where the water runs off. Weather's eased off now, so that's good. I think when you're carrying out this work outside, it's good to be prepared. I don't like canceling jobs, so I always carry a tarpaulin with me and I have a utility tent as well. I think there's always a way of getting around it, as long as you want to. And as we know, winter's coming up and that's gonna be cold and wet. I'm using my EV Ultra stripping tool here. If you haven't seen one of these before, um, I got sent this by Doncaster Cables and I've done a full review on it and I'll leave a link below in the description if you want to check that out. I think I need to adjust my blade a bit. I think, I think It's either getting blunt or it just needs a bit of adjustment.
So I always use linear clips when I'm clipping my EV Ultra cable. They look far better than cleats. They cost a little bit more, just put it in the price and I think we all just need to do really nice installs to be honest and stop beating each other down on the cost. One thing with the linear clips though is that they have really sharp serrated edges and that's so it can grip into the brickwork. So it's essential that you wear gloves otherwise you're just going to cut your fingers up. Now that everyone works from home, you find yourself in these situations where you can't turn off the power, so I need to wait for my client to finish her Zoom call, so a cup of tea time. Okay, so that's this consumer unit all connected up. I've already done my live test into this board, that's fine. The Henley block and the earth block's been installed. I'm just gonna button up the zappy and then it's job done. Okay, final thoughts on this consumer unit. There's pros and cons to this. Firstly, the con is to the client that it's such a big enclosure outside the house. But the pro to that is it does allow some spare capacity if required later on. From an installer point of view, I prefer it because there was more room for my cable routing inside. Now with some of the other smaller consumer units, it is really tight and limited and I do like a bit more room to work in. The only thing is, remember that you will need to provide your own neutral and earth links. Um, but otherwise, will I be using this again? I think so. Definitely. And the lid is really tight.
Right, so that's this installation basically complete. The last thing I need to do is connect this up to the Wi-Fi. Now, I'm gonna walk you through this and show you how it's done. And I have a new TP-Link, which I haven't used before. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna connect that up. And if you're thinking about getting into EV installations, this is probably the most painful part of it. Another thing to mention is I installed a Zappi yesterday and I had an issue with the app. I phoned up my energy and that there was a fault with the app or something and they were hopefully going to do an update and refresh the whole system in 24 to 48 hours so I may have a problem with that still. Again just bear this in mind when you're getting involved with this stuff because doing the installation it doesn't end there. Okay so when we're setting up the Wi-Fi the first thing we need to do is go into the menu and the menu button is here on the left hand side and we scroll down to other settings and then we go down to internet now after that you'll see Wi-Fi at the top select that and then you'll see Wi-Fi configuration go down to that and then you'll see Wi-Fi and access point you need to make sure both of these are on and then where it says WPS activate select that now what we need to do is go to the router and hopefully on the router it will have a WPS button which I'll press come back and hopefully it'll connect. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so I have pushed the WPS button on the router in the house and I've just pressed the plus button there and it's gonna see if it'll pair up. Now this signal, this signal has to go through one, two, three, four walls. So I'm not expecting it to pair up if I'm honest. No, it's not going to reach it. I've done this too many times to keep trying this. So what I'm going to do is set up the TP-Link. Okay, so here's the TP-Link I'm going to be using today. I haven't used this one before, so we're going to go through this together. These are about £40 on Amazon if you're interested. I'll leave a link below in the description. Just try and open this about cutting your fingers off. And if you're anything like me, butcher it. Okay, so here's the two parts of the TP link. I have a quick read of the instructions. And what you normally have to do with these TP links is plug one part into a socket next to the router and connect it up with this cable here to the router and then plug the other extender side into a socket closer to the EV charging point which is exactly what this is saying so we're going to give it a go so looking at this This is the part that I connect into the router and this is the signal extender which I'll put in a socket close by. Okay, so I've got the TP link set up in the house and I have that secondary TP, TP point on the other side of this wall. So I'm gonna go back into menu, down to other settings, internet, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi config, Watch out for this because sometimes it turns off. So just make sure that you make sure that is on. And then we go back down to WPS activate. And then this bit you've got me got to be quick. I need to go back to the router, push the WPS button, and then get back here, and then push the plus button again. And hopefully it'll pick it up. Okay, push the plus button. No, not connected, so this can be a, a real pain. Okay, so I can't get this connected immediately. There is another way. You can, of course, hardwire it. That's not really an option in this case because the route is on the other side of the house. It's a big, long run. We're not going to do it. 
We can connect this to the Wi-Fi another way, but you need a laptop or a computer. So my energy gave you some instructions on how to connect this up to the internet. So I'm gonna run you through it and just show you practically how it's done. This is the secondary way of connecting it up, by the way. So the first thing we need to do is go back into the information on the Zappi and get it SSID and password. So back on here, go down to other settings, go down to internet, go to Wi-Fi, and then you'll see the SSID and the password. So the best thing you can do is just get your phone out and take a photo of the screen because we're gonna need this information in a minute. Now, I always have my iPad with me, so that's what I'm going to use today. You can do this on your phone, but I find a bigger screen is just easier. So what we have to do is go into the settings on your iPad or iPhone and look for a Wi-Fi network called My Energy. Sometimes you need to reset the unit and turn it back on to get it to come up, which I think I'm gonna to have to do here, so bear with me. The other thing to remember is you need to go to the router and get the SSID and the password for that internet connection also. So just take another photo of that. Okay, so I'll just try and show you this. Okay, so what we have here is the My Energy Network. We're gonna select that and it's gonna ask for the password. And that password is what you took a photo of earlier on the Zappi. So that for me is, and then we say join. And then that's gonna take me to a My Energy page, hopefully. So what we do here is enter uh, a new password. So I'm just going to turn you away a second. Okay, so once you've done that, what will happen then is it will come up with this and what you need to do is select your network. Now, this is actually, this has picked up my TP link. So I'm just going to go in the house and get the password for that. Okay, so I'm just going to put this password in and say connect and hopefully that will get me connected sorry about my dirty ipad screen it was raining yesterday so it's all smudged so that's normally a good sign so we're going to go back to the zappy now and see if it's connected right so i'm going to go menu again other settings, internet, Wi-Fi, and it says status connected. So that is that bit, job done. So like I said earlier, when you're installing these car chargers, you're not just an electrician, you end up turning into some sort of IT specialist as well, because you have to get it connected up to the internet. So it's not as easy as you think sometimes, so bear that in mind. Okay, to summarise today, a few things we need to mention. Firstly, this isn't an electric vehicle charging point, it's electric vehicle supply equipment. So we've learned that, so that's good. I probably will do another video on this in a bit more, in more depth, so you can understand a bit better, but I just wanted to keep it nice and simple and just show you interesting things that I find out and things that I think you'd be interested in. So the Zappi's all there installed. We have the new IP65 consumer unit here. Do I like it? Yes. Will I use it again? Yes. And then internet connectivity. Bear this in mind. When you're doing your survey, check out where the router is so you can have a good guess at whether you think you're gonna need a TP link or if you wanna hardwire that internet signal. Normally I find that the TP link gets me out of trouble and it does just fine and it's another cable that's not clipped to the wall.
One last thing, if it's raining and throwing it down, don't cancel that job. Just stick a tarpaulin up or build a shelter and get on with it. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. All things must pass. But I'm not gonna wake up, wake up. I'm not ready, let me have another day. Don't wake up, wake up. Keep it steady, cause I'm happy. I'm not gonna wake up. No, not yet. Whoa. No, not yet. Whoa. No, no, not yet. Whoa. But I'm not gonna wake up. I'm not, I'm not gonna wait